Oh, howdy all. Grab yourselves a beer. It is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today, I wanted to talk about the news that came out today with the main thing being the discussion of the integration of Blight into the core of Path of Exile. However, just firstly, a couple of quick minor things first. Uh, there's some Im an image of what Astramentus can look like if you take a Divine Perfect Astramentus, that's one with absolutely flawless rolls, and hit it with 20 Intrinsic Catalysts. So this is it, 139 to all attributes, as well as the standard minus 4 physical damage taken from attack hits. Uh, the reason that I think this was posted is to answer a question that's being asked a lot, which is, can we use the new catalyst on unique items? The answer is yes, this is the proof, and Astramentus is a reasonably solid choice, but probably not the best unique to use these on. The one that we really want to, want to watch for is whether any of the oh, is whether the mods on Call of the Brotherhood can be affected by any of the catalysts, and I'm talking specifically about the 40% conversion, so 40% of lightning damage converted to cold damage. If that can be increased to 48% by use of catalysts, then that's going to be really powerful. There's also a lot of other unique items that will gain from having 20% higher stats of a specific type. Astramentus is just one example. There's lots of others. The other thing that was revealed today is that's in minor news is Zoff's Nurture, the upgraded version of the Zoff's Nurture bow that currently exists in the game at the moment. The only change that is absolutely certain here is that where it used to have ignites you inflict spread to other enemies within a radius of 15. What's now happened is that socketed gems are supported by level 20 ignite proliferation. That has two effects. Firstly, it makes socketed gems cost 30% more mana. This is a drawback, however, I think that the upsides of this massively exceed that drawback. And so this is a big buff, even though in that element it's negative. So, socketed gems are supported by level 20 ignite proliferation. Ignite proliferation causes ignites to spread in a radius of 19, which is better than the 15 that they currently do. It also, much more importantly, causes them to do 39% more damage. That's, that's the Ignite component only. If you're playing a skill with a bow that ignites enemies, then Zoff's Nurture has gone from a bargain basement unique you might use for a little while into a compelling endgame choice. I'm not sure that it's going to actually be the best in slot item for any particular build, but it is at least worth considering using now, whereas previously it was just a... it was basically almost completely trash. Of the big news today was the integration of Blight into the core of the game of Path of Exile. And just having a quick look through here, Blight was a highly divisive, oh, it was a slightly divisive league, but not nearly as much as Synthesis or Bestiary, which were consequently not integrated into the core game in the form that they were released in. Side note, I still want Synthesis back. Um, I had a lot more fun in Synthesis League than I did in Legion, for instance. Uh, but that said, uh, there certainly was a case that lots of people didn't like it. After a lot of internal discussion, we have decided to integrate Blight into the core game on PC only with the release of 3.9.0. For now, Blight won't be added to core Path of Exile on console platforms due to some performance problems we need to solve. Our plan is to fix these problems and to integrate it. Firstly, I want to say that this is a, like the decision to separate PC and console here is a good decision. Uh, consoles every report that I've heard. Now, I don't play on console myself, I'm purely a PC gamer, and I'm running a PC that's quite a bit above running your games as minimum specs for Path of Exile. I'm running a PC that was sort of a mid-tier gaming PC in 2016, so built around a, uh, a, built around a GeForce 970 uh, graphics card. Nothing amazing, but it's, it's fairly solid. It gets the job done. Uh, and it is perform it performs fine with Blight. However, consoles just don't have that sort of gr processing grunt. They don't have the heat dissipation that's necessary to run a graphics card, even as powerful as a 970, much less the more modern, you know, 1080 Ti or 2080 or 2080 Ti if you've got a really high budget. And so as a result, uh, console performance has been really poor during Blight, but so also has been performance on minimum spec PCs. So I think that the decision to say, okay, it's going to be there on PC, it's not going to be there on consoles, is the right short-term decision. Hopefully they can fix some of the performance issues, 
Uh, this may involve a decrease in the number of monsters that spawn, but any changes along those lines, uh, even if they make my gameplay slightly less fun, I'm cool with them if it makes it so, if it means that more people can enjoy the Blight content. However, Blight will not be present during the main storyline campaign. I think this is a missed opportunity. I think it should be in some of the currently underutilized side areas of the game. Uh, Dread Thicket being the one that always stands out as, you know, I'm talking about the Act 2 Dread Thicket because the Act 7 Dread Thicket is, is used. But the Dread 2 Act Thicket has sort of no reason to exist other than to be a place for people, for newer players to get lost in. I think that's one place that the Blight content should be. But as well as that, it could be in a couple of the areas in, of the core game that don't have very much going on in them. Uh, and I think that'd be useful because new players could benefit from having access to plus 30 stat or uh, annoyance pretty early on. Anyways, once you reach map, Blight's encounters will spawn in 10% of map areas that you enter. And so this is basically the same as is currently the case for Breaches. Every encounter will drop at least one oil or at least one Blighted map. The chance of Blighted maps dropping it's been significantly increased compared to the previous drop rate. So on this, uh, expect glider maps to probably be only slightly rarer than they currently are, and expect oils to be considerably rarer than they are now. Uh, however, that's just going to mean that the threshold for using... The, the threshold of how good an amulet needs to be for you to put a top-tier anoint on it is going to go up. The diamond skin anoint is very cheap. It is a very good anoint to use on your cheaper amulets. So when you're just just sort of getting yourself established in maps, then don't don't feel that it's put whispers of doom on or bust. Uh, just go, all right. I'm going to stick diamond skin on my on my amulet. That's going to be good enough for a while, and then over time, I'll try to find an amazing amulet, one that is so good that it merits putting a better anointment on it. The other thing that needs to be said here is that um, increasing the chance of blighted maps dropping is fine. Uh, I'm hoping that this brings the, the amount of blighted maps that we get over a league up to about the level that it was in Blight League. I was pretty happy with that. Uh, it's certainly not anything like Legion where you almost never got to go into the domain of Timeless Conflict because it just took so long to gather splinters. Uh, I'm ho uh, blighted. Blighter maps were much more available in the domain of Timeless Conflict, and I'm pretty happy with that. Some feedback from players was that Blight encounters become too easy in high-level areas. I do agree with this, in that uh, once you were able to speed clear Tier 16 maps, uh, the Blighted encounters, with the exception of the bosses, were pretty trivial. The bosses actually did put up a bit of a fight, and I found myself regularly needing to slow them down by various means. Uh, I would usually use Glacial Cage Towers to do that, and other people had different strategies. But our work on in-game difficulty in Conquerors of the Atlas has certainly affected Blight also, so you should see an appropriate level of difficulty for the rewards granted at high levels. The rewards for Blights in upper red maps are miles better than the ones in lower tiers, and so I'm confident that this will be Although this is going to hurt hurt my early league strategy, uh, this will be for the better of the game overall. So I'm looking forward to seeing this. Anyways, once you get a chance to play Conquerors of the Atlas, let us know feedback about Blight integration, whether there's anything else you feel we should address. Thanks as always. What I get from reading this is that I feel that they're sort of running out of time. They've had some better ideas about what to do with Blight, and they've decided that what matters is making the deadline, the 13th of December deadline for Conquerors of the Atlas and for Metamorph League. That's the priority and the Blight integration stuff can be resolved later. I hope this is the case. I hope that they revisit this later and that when they revisit it, what I hope they do is they mirror the way that Legion has been implemented in the core game. So currently we're seeing Blights being added to the uh, Blight's being added to 10% of maps, just like Legions are added to 10% of maps. I would like to also see a Scarab, a Blight Scarab added. I would like to see Blight Encounters in the Delve Mines, and I would like to see one of the lesser utilised rooms in the Temple of Atsawatl gain Blight Encounters. Uh, so I think that would be some of the things that could be done to improve the integration of Blight. 
Uh, that said, though, I think um, I'm glad to see Blight continuing to be available in the game. Uh, I've personally really enjoyed this league. Uh, I've found that it's been, personally, it's been a lot more fun than Legion was. Uh, obviously, not everyone's going to agree with me on that. And I'm hoping that we see that we see some refinement on it in the future and that they solve some of the technical issues that are plaguing consoles. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you've got any comments or questions, definitely fire away below. Otherwise, I hope you have a good one.